Welcome to the Apron Academy. This video is specially designed for the dietitian in training, also known as the RD to be. In this video, we're going to be talking about vitamin E, which I really like. I am a big fan of all of fat soluble vitamins, and vitamin E is really fun and interesting. So, I think it's really neat because it is a fat soluble antioxidant. So, we have um vitamin C, which is our water-soluble antioxidant. So I just think it's so cool how um, we can have a fat-soluble and water-soluble um, antioxidant forms in the foods that we eat. So there are two classes of um, vitamin E, kind of uh, vitamin E is the umbrella term. Um, we have tocopherols, which are our saturated um, forms, and then tocotrienols, which are our unsaturated uh, forms. So the only difference structurally is these double bonds are not here. Um, uh, yeah, so each class Tocopherols, tocotrienols have four uh, vitamins. So there are eight total vitamins for vitamin E um, alpha tocopherol, beta, gamma, delta. Same for alpha tocotrienol, beta, gamma, delta. There you go. So um, this alpha tocopherol is our most. Uh, biologically active form of vitamin E. This is the big one. So um, typically with um, the our foods, uh, we get um, plants and animals, uh, specifically the fats, so like meats, oils, nuts, and seeds. And then um, with our tocotrienols, we get it from barley, rice bran, palm oil, um, great antioxidants uh, because this is our unsaturated um, fatty acid form. So when we talked about vitamin A, um, it also had different vitamins, um, but they were able to convert between each other. Uh, the difference here is these cannot convert between each other. Once it's in that form, it's set. Also, I did just want to um, point out that um, the American diet often is in this gamma tocopherol uh, form. And then uh, this alpha tocopherol, which is that most biologically active form of vitamin E, we find in there sunflower, safflower, <laughs> safflower, and olive oils in this alpha tocopherol. Um, yeah, so actually, I'm gonna stick right here for a second. So our absorption, how we absorb vitamin E, it's the same as all fat-soluble vitamin absorptions. We um, have our micelles, which is how um, each of these vitamins is able to enter into the enterocytes. In the enterocytes, it's um, combined with the chylomicrons. Then it, as it leaves the enterocyte with the chylomicrons, enters the lymphatic system. From there, it goes to the thoracic duct, duct, then the subclavian vein. From there, it's able to transport to the liver, um, VLDL, and then to the blood. Um, so specifically, I do want to mention in that liver, vitamin E is incorporated into VLDL and then secreted into the blood. So our circulating um, tocopherols are taken up via um, receptor-mediated endocytosis. And then 
within the cell, vitamin E is primary found, primarily found within the membranes, so like plasma, mitochondria, etc. So now, how does it get into the body? Um, we have a transporter um, called alpha TTP. Um, I'll just write that there, which um, is able to incorporate the vitamin E into the VLDL. Um, so without it, we could not incorporate into VLDL, not get into the body. Um, so if we do have a mutation of the alpha TTP, then even if we're getting enough vitamin E on our diet, um, we'll still show signs of deficiency because it's not able to um, get incorporated into the VLDL because this alpha TTP is what does that. So now focusing on this alpha tocopherol, why is that one the predominantly bioactive vitamin? So there are two reasons. Um, the first is because this alpha TTP is specific for alpha tocopherol. So um, it's able to put this one specifically into the VLDL in our body. Um, so then this alpha tocopherol is enriched through the alpha TTP. The second reason why alpha tocopherol is the primary um, bioactive vitamin is because we have another um, transporter called cytochrome P450 uh, 4F2. This um, essentially gets rid of vitamin E, it detoxifies our enzymes. And what's interesting is this cytochrome P450 4F2 is specific for the rest of the seven. So it's getting rid of the rest of the seven. So that's why this is like highlighted more. It's able to get uptake um, or used by this alpha TTP, but then it's not um, leaving our bodies as easily as these others. So that is why alpha tocopherol is the primary prime uh, or predominantly bioactive vitamin. So now I want to talk a little bit about vitamin E functions. So it is a superior free radical antioxidant and it maintains um, membrane integrity. So if you imagine a soccer ball, I played soccer when I was um, in high school, loved it. But if you look at this soccer ball, it does have um, like different little areas. Um, so if you imagine each of these areas and vitamin E is located, like there may be one per each um, little area. And also you can see, maybe not in this uh, picture as well, but it's a little bit more frequent, but nevertheless. Um, imagine that this is our, bi, uh, our lipid bilayer. Um, so this on the surface is this. So every now and then we have... Uh, vitamin E. So as um, how vitamin E functions, it loses its electrons and instead of being a harmful radical, it stops membrane damage. So our free radicals, damage, 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 it comes to the vitamin E. The vitamin E is able to stop the damage from continuing. Um, yeah, so it functions as this lipid-soluble free radical scavenger inside those membranes. Um, as, as that free radical scavenger, it protects the membrane lipids and the proteins. And, and it does this as it generates peroxyl radicals. So there are three kind of 
steps, I guess, as a free radical scavenger. The first is initiation. So it's um, generated from polyunsaturated fatty acids and forms um, peroxyl, a peroxyl radical. Then our second step, for lack of a better word, is propagation. And it reacts with other polyunsaturated fatty acids to form a fatty acid radical. So then that um, chain reaction of damage, which keeps on going, affecting others, it's stopped, or that chain reaction is broken with vitamin E. And then this third step is the terminal step, so it generates a free radical. Um, and the tocopherols are most effective at um, breaking that chain of reactions um, because they react faster with the peroxyl radicals. Um, and also tocopherol radicals, that radical is relatively non-reactive and can be reduced by ascorbic acid. So vitamin E, when it's, um, it's oxidized, when it protects against damaging free radicals, and then vitamin C hands off that electron. What does that look like? This is our antioxidant network. Um, we need all these, we need all of them uh, for it to function. Um, we need, if we're missing one, then it's not going to function like it needs to. Uh, we can't have, it can't work in isolation. So like I just mentioned, um, vitamin E, um, is protecting against those damaging free radicals. Vitamin C is able to hand off electrons. Each impacts another. Um, so we have uh, vitamin E, vitamin C, um, glucothione, and uh, niacin, vitamin B3. So very important uh, antioxidant, antioxidant network. Now, what happens if we don't have enough? So, I mentioned before the um, alpha TTP deficiency or mutation. If we don't have enough of that, we can be eating as much vitamin E as we want, um, but we still would uh, show signs of uh, deficiency. Also, a lipid malabsorption, that's true for all um, fat soluble vitamins. So if something is being malabsorbed, then obviously it's going to appear to our body that we don't have enough, which can cause um, neurological issues. So that's a big deal. It's not really stored. So um, it is in adipose tissue, but it's really hard to get out of there. Um, so, and also the more adipose tissue or yeah that you have the more adipose tissue that you have the more fat soluble vitamins you'd need for it to actually be functioning and then um so vitamin e helps with immune responses reduced risk of cardiovascular disease cancers degenerative diseases um so and even vitamin e has shown to prevent LDL oxidation, which may be the cause of those, um, the reduced risk of cardiovascular diseases. So if we don't have enough vitamin E, then we will lack immune responses, will lack or have an increased risk of cardiovascular diseases, increased risk of cancer and degenerative diseases. So primarily the people most at risk are those who have a low-fat diet because vitamin E is a fat-soluble um, vitamin. And then I just want to mention that as the dietitian, um, you know, we are in that position to give supplements as needed, but um, studies have shown that maybe we shouldn't do vitamin E supplements um, because many studies have shown that they're often adverse of, or reverse effects. So if the vitamin E helps the immune responses, helps reduce the risk of cardiovascular diseases, then 
um, having too much or supplements could actually uh, cause that to be an issue with all those things. Um, and even there's shown to be a risk of hemorrhages. But overall, vitamin E is so important. Um, we need it as our antioxidant. We need those antioxidant functions. So um, eat you some vitamin E. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe and join me next time. Thanks.